attend fashion events as I do or do any work with brands as I do, there are lots of people who feel like that delegitimizes your views as um, someone who takes an interest in politics. I'm a journalist and documentary filmmaker. I used to primarily just be like an on-camera reporter, but now I'm kind of like moving more into like a role that suits how much of a control freak I am. Right now I'm out here in LA developing my first feature documentary, um, which I'm like directing. So I'm completely behind the camera for that. It's about the conflict between religion and sexuality. I think it's, it's really interesting because like social media is obviously an opportunity for like young people and people from our generation to feel like connected to people. Like there's a lot to be said for um, just kind of like noise online and that can be good and bad. Like I feel definitely like young people are stressed by what they see in the news. But I also think that being able to have instant access to, to global news so quickly is, is, is really important. So like one of the projects that I worked on um, was an initiative called Use Your Voice. We got lots of different artists and designers and creatives to design these graphics which were like staggered and activated to remind young people when the deadlines were to register to vote and when the actual voting day is. So I think that it's very easy for people to kind of like trivialize the role of social media and assume that like young people just sit around all day taking like dog selfies on Snapchat but actually like I really believe and I've heard firsthand from young people that those sorts of reminders are really useful. Over the past 10 years it feels like celebrities have, or people with like a public voice have just tended to do everything they can to appeal to everyone. So people just kind of like stay out of politics and social affairs. That's finally starting to change. People do have a platform or like lots of the people who, who posted as part of the project even though kind of like it was all billed as being like non-partisan. There were certain graphics that were definitely more left-leaning. I was surprised to see how, you know, like these enormous stars who like have to really appeal to such a mainstream audience were very, very openly kind of aligning themselves with one political party. Social media is a blessing and a curse, I guess, when it comes to um, the current like state of affairs. I do, I do feel like there is a link to how kind of like narcissistic and self-obsessed we all are at the exact same time, where everything seems to be the most fucked up. And I'm constantly kind of like wondering, well, how much of this like page should be dedicated to me, like posting like photos of me where I think I look hot in this outfit and how much of it should be dedicated purely to the social causes that I'm passionate about. And I think that especially if you're a woman in this industry, it's kind of like one or the other. Well, if, if you attend fashion events as I do or do any work with brands as I do, there are lots of people who feel like that delegitimizes your views as um, someone who takes an interest in politics. Yeah, I suppose I suppose I am a bit more aware like of how I use social media because I'm a journalist. In France, if you're a journalist, there are laws about like what you can endorse and can't endorse. So like I would if I were to be working in France then I wouldn't be able to do my like riveting hashtag spawn for whatever brand and I do feel like there's something to be said for, for that. I feel like everyone, like regardless of if you're a journalist, even if you're just a fucking like teenager growing up the work personal thing or the like internet persona versus your real persona, those lines are really blurred now. I feel like everyone, I mean this is so fucking depressing to say, but I feel like everyone now growing up in this day and age like has a consideration or like thinking about their like personal brand, you know, and that's just like existing on the internet now. Like between all of us, we like put this thing together like just through Facebook and and just through Instagram and just through like sharing it and literally like I got back to London I got a megaphone and like wrote to a bunch of my friends and coming and we staged this demo at like the Houses of Parliament and the next day it was on like the cover of the New York Times and there were all these young people who were like thank you so much for doing this like we're too young to vote or we were too young to vote in this referendum but like this seeing this online and then being able to come here and connect with other people who feel the same way as us was like an opportunity for us to still feel empowered or feel like we could 
like take part in the conversation you know seeing that there are demos happening or like being able to speak to people who share your concerns and share your world views like that that's the amazing thing about about the internet and the way that it connects young people young people who are growing up in in Trump's America and equally young people back home in the UK where I'm from I think that there's a lot of like shared anxiety and, and fear about the future you would expect the people that you looked up to or the people with a voice to be like passing comment on on things and trying to change the world that they live in i don't know growing up in the early 2000s where everything was like really manufactured and it was just like the rise of like the, this like pre-packaged model um of music even when you're talking about like indie bands or whatever that really kind of like disappeared in a way that there are still these these artists who, who are in their own scenes having such a kind of like pivotal effect and being, um, you know, spokespersons for whichever causes they most believe in. And if I'm being like really open, I had this view of like music journalism that I was going to be like connected to all these artists and be like really inspired and be like me who like really, really gave a shit about the world around them and then like you spend I don't know a, a few years like into being bands you're like oh don't care about doing anything other than like smoking weed out of an apple I'm like a Mickey Blanco super fan and he was we did a film with him in uh, the series that I made the music documentary series the idea of like intersectionality in general to me um, and I guess just like being more aware of of my privilege and um, visibility and like what space certain artists occupy over others and I think like I you know, as well as being a fan of Mickey's music for years I followed him on Twitter for like as long as I could remember and just felt like fuck like this guy is just, I don't know, just like speaks his mind and he's so brave and everything that he's saying is like so important for for people like me to, to be aware of and to be like sort of re-broadcasting. Um, that film is, is really important to me that I made with him. The artists who are brave enough to like stand up and, and, and use their voice for good because of course it's fucking scary. Like you're risking losing your livelihood and I think that people who have the guts to do that are very brave. You can't make something without it being political um, because I think that just the state of the world now everything is. My next project will definitely be kind of like exploring the state of where we're at politically like through the lens of a certain um, story. Do I feel optimistic? I feel optimistic that like lots of young people in the west like actually feel kind of like re-energized in return to the current administration here or like what's happening back home in the uk and like i think that that's really um exciting the internet has allowed young people a platform now to like prove prove that they should be given the credit to like take responsibility over their own like futures